everybody, Caleb here, and today I've got this Yamaha 12 string. I've had this for a while. I showed it off. It's probably been a few months ago now, but I haven't really had time to get at it because this one is not for real, not because this one is not really for a customer. Um, it's a little bit of a mess, and as you can see, it's missing a very vital component. The bridge came off of this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this down and we'll get started on cleaning this thing up. You can see there's some electronics that are, uh, well, that's the under saddle, or under saddle pickup, which is just floating around loose in there. But I'll set this down and we can get started on maybe cleaning this up a little bit and thinking about putting it back together. So I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a nice fine layer of junk on the finish. I'm taking some water with just a little bit of soap in it and I'm wiping this down. Hoping to get any of this stuff I can off of here. I'm really seeing how uh, chipped up this finish is around here. I'm hoping we can do something about that. I'll take a dry cloth and dry this down. So throughout this thing, there are quite a few spots where it's either pulling up uh, the wood or the finish is pulling up, which is not great. Um, I'm not totally certain how I'm going to go about fixing it. For example... I think now that I've gotten really close here, you can probably see it a little bit better. See if I can't tilt it just a little. Throughout this area, and you can see I even caught a piece of the paper towel on it. The finish is coming up in this direction. Um, now the thing I need to be sure of is whether that's just the finish or some wood as well. But that looks like just finish to me. There's also a big piece missing uh, back here. I think I still have this piece attached to the bridge. Um, I'm going to have to go look for the bridge actually, but... I'm fairly certain this piece is still attached to the bridge. Throughout this middle part, I'm not totally sure what we're going to do. What I might end up doing is uh, doing some light sanding. Um, we're talking four or six hundred. And seeing if I can't get it to buff out. It actually looks a lot better on camera than it does in person. Let's see if I can't get it to look like I can see it. There, I think you can really see the, uh, it's got kind of a fogginess around it compared to the other areas. So you can see right here, it's kind of foggy and up and through here, it gets back to glossy. It looks a lot worse in person than it does on camera, especially at this particular angle. Um, what I'm thinking right now is doing some light sanding to smooth any of these sharp edges because you can hear it. That's on that finish. I think I'm going to put the bridge back where it was. Um, obviously, I'm going to remove any finish that's underneath the bridge. You can see right through here. This is all finish that was underneath the bridge. This is what causes these bridges to come off, is that they're not glued wood to wood. They're glued wood to finish, and the finish just doesn't stick. On top of that, these 12 strings have to be glued really well because there's so much more tension on them. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is maybe get out some uh, high grit sandpaper and just kind of work these edges down and see what that does to our look and our feel. So I cleaned them up a little bit and, and they might be a little bit better, but the more I look at it, the more I think it's really just really, really splintered through there, which kind of leaves one option 
for stabilizing it. And it's not an option I really like to do, but it's probably going to be going the CA glue route, the uh, super glue. So what I'm going to try to do is tape this up as much as I can so I don't get any extra glue anywhere I don't want it. Um, the CA glue will stabilize small cracks and splinters and that sort of thing as good as anything else could and a lot of the times better because of how thin it is it wicks its way into small areas but it's also a really good way to ruin your finish very quickly. not spots through the whole thing that need it. So I'm trying to tape up any spot that I don't want any glue because the CA glue is not forgiving. If it can screw up your day, it will. And you know, even the tape, it won't prevent all of it, but it will hopefully mitigate my issues. Now what I'll do is I'll get some CA glue out. I'm gonna grab a dropper for application. Now what I'll do is I'll have a piece of uh, towel ready to mop up any extra. I've got my CA glue out. I'm using the super thin, I think is what they call it. And I'm just gonna put some in a small dropper. As you can see here, I got a dropper and there's some glue, CA glue in there. I'm just gonna try to carefully put it along these cracks. Dot up any extra. It actually seems to be working fairly well. Um, I can see it wicking into the cracks. I don't know how well it comes across on camera, but this one I need to hold down, I think. Put a little bit more. But I do think that's going to end up holding all those cracks down now, which is good. So it holds the cracks in the finish down. It holds the, uh, the splinters in the wood in. And it's thin enough that it gets it wicks its way into the bottom of the cracks and kind of soaks into the wood fibers. You would never get that with any other glue. It'd just be too thick. And ultimately, I think this is really the only way that I was going to get this all held back down. Now, what I'm going to have to do is fix any mess that I've created with the glue here. Uh, ultimately, this is probably going to look a little different than the rest of it, so I'll need to sand it back out and buff it back out. Uh, try to get it to a matching sheen. But it didn't run too far. I think we're doing pretty good, actually. Just to be safe, I'm going to give it a real light spritz with the uh, accelerator, just so I know it's all set. Like I said, when you don't want it to set, immediately it sets just like that. When you want it to set perfectly as soon as it goes on, it'll take minutes and minutes and minutes to dry. So I'll just take the, uh, the accelerator and do a light, fine mist over it. So I can pull this tape back up now. You can see one spot where it started to stick. It's that tape didn't want to come up. That's probably the CA glue. 
Well, I think that's actually an improvement. Um, you can hear it's really rough in there now, but I think with some light sanding, you know, and start getting it back to buffing, that's going to be really, really good. Uh, vast improvement from where we started. So I did some light sanding, and then I started to notice there's a few voids in the uh, finish, uh, like little chips that are go have gone missing. I'm just going to take a toothpick and some lacquer and try and fill those in. If I can get some lacquer on my toothpick. I'm using this Mohawk Classic Instrument Lacquer. I've found it works really well for just about whatever I'm doing. Um, it's ready to spray, so it's got the thinner and the retarder already mixed in, which makes it dry really fast, especially in small amounts, which is really helpful for touch-ups. I'm kind of trying to poke it into the uh, into the void, into the hole. That way I know it's actually making it in there. Lacquer is notoriously finicky about avoiding holes. So I'm kind of covering it and then poking it in there. Hoping that's going to help. I don't know if it will. I hope it will. All right, we'll give that some time to dry. I imagine it won't take much. Like I said, this is, it's already thinned, so it dries a little faster. So I've put that extra bit of finish on the top now, and while it's drying, I figured we'd take a look at the bridge. Um, I've not got an issue with reusing this bridge, but it's got quite a bit of the top on the bottom, and it's not all exactly tight, uh, you know, stuck down still. So I thought maybe I'd try to remove what I could because it looks like there's finish in between here so it would make sense to try to take it off remove any of the finish and then re-glue it I'm just very carefully trying to you know cut off what I can you can see there's a big section right here and it's finished all the way up in. So I need to take that off, uh, probably just glue it back down to the top and then scrape the finish off of it. I'll see if I can't just glue this piece back down since I got it off. Um, it does stop with the finish eventually in here, which is making me think uh, this section in here probably didn't have any finish on it, which is why it's still stuck as well as it is. Um, I'm going to keep trying to see what I can get off of here just to make sure. But I think I'll go ahead and try to glue this back down uh, just to keep it where it should be. So this sat for quite a while, uh, gluing up the sliver of the top that was still attached to the bridge. I'm hoping that that held it down plenty. I imagine it will. That looks a lot better than it did. You might think that this was a little more work than this was worth. Uh, taking the top off of here and putting it back on here. Because, you know, if it was still stuck on here, it should be fine once it goes back on here. The thing is, though, there was a lot of finish, actually, still stuck on this front edge that came off with this piece that I glued back to here. So, there's a lot of finish that's going to be uh, taken off the top where the bridge is going to sit. You know, where it should be wood to glue contact, so... It was probably a good thing that I took it off because now I can actually get at that finish, remove all the excess, 
and we know we'll have a clean contact that way. And here shortly what we'll do is I'll put this on here, I'll get this all lined up, I'll probably get some pins out and kind of pin the bridge into place, and then we'll mark the outline so we know where to take all the finish off to. Uh, as soon as I'm done cleaning up here, that's what I'll get set up to do. So you can see I've got uh, three pins holding that bridge in there. Um, that's keeping it from moving. It holds it right where it should be. And I've got a little clamp just holding it down so you know it's pressed against the top. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a really sharp knife and just scribe around the bridge as carefully as I can to not wander off. And that will give me a really solid line where I don't want any finish under the bridge. This is a process that can put nice big scratch marks all across your top if you're not careful. You kind of want to cut into the bridge. If you keep it straight, you know, you can do a good job. But if you start to wander off, you may end up cutting out. You know, it, it'll slide way out from your bridge and you'll have a big line in your finish then. You don't really want that. So if you can, you want to kind of cut into the bridge. You'll probably notice I'm cutting it all more than once. I'm not trying to get it all done in one go. I, uh, letting the knife do the work. If I push harder, it's a lot easier to lose control of my knife. So I'd rather just cut it a few times, run it a few times, and get a real clean line, then get it all done all at once. All right, I believe I've gotten a good score around the whole thing now. So I can take this off of here. Yeah, you can see that. I can see that on camera really well. Um, we got a nice line all the way around, and I think you're really seeing how much finish was underneath this bridge. That's a lot. Um, yeah, this whole area back here is finished over. This whole front edge is finished over. The wings barely do anything because of all the finish that's underneath them. So the next thing for me to do is to scrape off all the finish that's inside of here. And you know, while I'm in there, I can kind of scrape this all clean. So it'll be a nice good surface for us to glue to. I'm just starting with a chisel because it was right here. Um, yeah, there's plenty of ways you can do this. So I didn't film a lot of this, but I did finally clean this off and I just spent the last, oh, half hour scraping and it was finish off of this section of the bridge. I'm fairly certain it was finished. It came out very light colored. You can see some of it there. I'm pretty sure that's not glue. So there's no wonder this came unstuck, but now we have a perfect footprint for this bridge to go back in. So I think we're ready to glue it down. Um, I think I'm gonna actually put some pins and the bridge holes so that I find uh, the holes in the top a little easier. Just like this. I just need to make sure those holes are cleared out. So this way it indexes down perfectly where it should be. Won't allow it to move. I'll put a clamp on there, I'll pull those out, and then they'll be good to go. And I'll maybe put another two clamps on there. So 
we get this started on glue, I need a paintbrush that I don't have. So I'll have to go get one of those, and then we'll put some glue on there. This is kind of a big paintbrush, but I think it'll work just fine for what I need. I did a big glob of glue. My little tip is all clogged up and won't let any glue through, but... I scraped a lot of finish off this thing. Like, way more than you should have to scrape off of any guitar, let alone a 12-string guitar. It's no wonder this thing came unstuck. For as much glue as I put on there, I just want to make sure I have absolutely, absolutely enough because I want really good contact. I don't want this to come on off. I don't want it coming off anytime ever again, unless it has to. I made kind of a big mess, but I'm not too worried about it. This is water cleanup glue. It shouldn't be too big a deal to clean it up. I'm going to put glue on the bridge side as well. I'm going to pull those plastic pins out before it has time to set, so we should be good. All right, so every square inch has been covered, and then some. So now we find the holes those will index in, so it won't allow the bridge to move. Oh, that's sitting in there good. I'm going to pull this one out. off any glue. Stick a clamp in there. Well, I think that's stuck down. Um, I got squeeze out pretty much all the way around it. I'm noticing there's a little spot missing there, but let me see. I think it's going to be all right. I need to work on cleaning up the squeeze out glue now. I really can't fit any more clamps in the hole. This first thing I'm doing is watering this down to help the glue become a little easier to take off. I'll take a cloth through and just kind of wipe it up. It's looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to let that sit at least overnight. It's going to have some plenty, plenty, plenty of time to dry. Um, we'll come back whenever it's dry. It'll be not today, not tomorrow, probably, because I've got other things to do. But after a little while, it'll be nice, dry, and set. So I've had a little gap in recording on this guitar. Um, I think the last thing we did was we glued the bridge on. Uh, I took the clamps off. It's looking really good. I'm really happy with that. I did a little bit of finish touch-ups on the top to try to hopefully make it look a little better. And it's not looking bad. Um, I think we're just about ready to start setting this up. I did pull the strings off of it. Uh, I did that yesterday and I shoved one of the G-strings really deep into my finger. So my little bit of advice is don't do that. That really hurts. Um, so now we're catching up. I think we're going to set this thing up here real quick. Um, we need a new nut. We need a new saddle. The thing I want to check, though, is if the electronics work. Uh, if they do work, I'm going to put the pickup back in it. That way it's in there. I don't see any, you know, um, if, if it does work, I'd like to have it in there so it can be used. Um, if it doesn't work, I'm not going to bother putting it back in there. So to do that, we're going to have to get a new battery, and the battery compartment is here. So we'll try and open this up. It's kind of a spring thing. There we go. Um, so if that'll give you any hint as to how old this battery is, it's a Radio Shack battery. I don't even know if there's a Radio Shack that's still open. <laughs> So I think we need a new battery. So I got a new battery out. I just got to open up the 
plastic packaging on it. Put that in there. Put that back in. Now I'll plug this in and uh, I'll just grab the actual pickup and we'll tap it with something metal and see if it uh, makes any sound. So we're plugged in. I think we're ready to go. I'm gonna grab a little screwdriver. Make sure the volume's turned up. I don't know if you can hear it. But it is, uh, does seem to be working. I have the amp a little ways away. You may not be able to hear it or any differentiation from me actually tapping it. But it is working. I'm glad to hear that. So if I turn it up, we should have some more volume. Yeah. Cool. Muted. Cool. I'm glad to see that this works. Um, I'll be using this pickup again then. Um, typically, you know, using these under saddle pickups can kind of hurt your tone a little bit because you're putting something in between your saddle and your bridge. Um, if you wanted it to be sounding as good as you could acoustic, then you really probably wouldn't do this. But I'm going to do this because it already has the electronics built in. I may as well keep using them. And I'm going to use this plugged in more than anything. So that's what I'll do. If this were someone else's guitar, then I would definitely consult them on whether they want the pickup put back in. But for me, I'm going to put it back in so I can actually use this thing plugged in. Okay, uh, let me get uh, the amp put away and the cord put away and we'll start putting this back where it belongs. And we can start looking at really setting this thing up. So I've got a couple of blanks out. We've got a saddle blank and a nut blank and they're both way too big. That's fine. Uh, I think I'm going to start on the nut. Not for any particular reason. Just... That's what I'm going to do. Um, first thing I'm going to need to do is get a, a width measurement here. So what I'll do is I'll take my calipers, make sure they're zeroed, and I'll just try to get this width here. We're sitting about 196 thousandths. Um, so that's how I'm going to thin this down. I'll thin this down to this. Um, and then that'll fit perfectly in that slot. Uh, this is a bone nut. It's kind of yellowed. It's fairly old. But I'll have a nice nut that goes right in there. Um, this didn't have a nut when it came to me. So I am going to have to make a new one for it. If it had a nut that was usable, I would definitely be using it. Um, making nuts takes a little bit of time. It's not loads and loads of fun. But because it doesn't have one, I'm going to go ahead and put a bone one on it because I have it. Um, if it had a, even a plastic nut, I probably wouldn't bother changing it out with bone. It's usually not that big of a deal unless you have an issue with the nut. So I'm going to go thin this down. We'll come back here and then we'll start thinking about shaping on this. All right, so I've got this nut thinned down. It's obviously way too long, and it's probably still too tall, but it fits in there nice and snug. Now, in regards to too tall, I'm going to try something um, I haven't done before. I know lots of people do it, and that's been suggested, uh, one could say, a million times. So I'm going to try and run a pencil across here. I got a feeling it's not yet thin enough. I've thinned it down in hopes that it would be thin enough, and I don't think it is yet. So I'm going to go thin it down a little bit more. I don't want to take it all the way to like half a pencil. Maybe I do. I don't know. Um, no one gives you really good instructions on how to cut a pencil in half. <laughs> 
So I'm gonna go back to the uh, sander and see if I can't make it totally flat, just a little bit closer to half. So I've got my actually half a pencil here, and I'm just gonna scribe this line across here. May as well get the sides as well. And that should be pretty close to what my nut needs to be. So I'll pull that out. I've got some lines. Um, because I haven't done this before, I'm going to be uh, cutting on the, leaving a little extra on there side of that line. If it turns out that that's too much, then I'll know for next time, but also, you know, I have a little bit of leeway here. So I'm gonna go knock that down. Hopefully this will be a pretty easy process. I can't imagine it can be that difficult. I'm gonna put some uh, forward angle on this as well. So it's gonna be uh, like this. It's a little bit exaggerated. Instead of flat, it's gonna be tilted back. That way the strings make sure they leave, you know, at this last point, not uh, have a high spot somewhere else. So I'll go knock that out. I'll come back and we'll see where it's at. So I got this down to size, and I'm actually really happy with the way this is looking. Uh, you can see it fits in there, and it actually fits really snug. It's got that forward angle like I like. I've kind of done a little bit of work to make sure these edges aren't sharp. It's looking really good. Um, I probably don't need to put any glue on there, but I'm going to just because I like to have it where it's not going to fall out even when the strings aren't holding it down. So I'm just going to do a little dot of glue. Got a little too much on here. And I'm using the uh, super fatic glue. It works good for this. I'll just sit that in there, make sure it's nice and centered. All right, give that a few minutes to set and that will be totally set. That nut will be very good for that. That looks really good, I think. Um, the half a pencil thing seems to work pretty good. I think that's probably a pretty good height. Um, we'll see as we start getting slots in it, but for now, we'll let that set. So this has had some time to set, and it's now totally stuck in there, and I'm very happy about it. Um, you can probably see I've got some marks on there now, um, for string spacing. I did just go ahead and pull those off of, uh, my 12 string. Uh, the nut width was basically the same, so I just used a note card and, uh, marked them out and just drew them on here real light. So I'm ready to start putting some slots in this nut. Um, I've got all my files out. They're just, just barely off camera. You can't see them, but I'm going to start putting uh, these slots in here. I'm going to start trying to anyway. Having a hard time getting this started. I think, I'm not real sure. It's just because the bone is so hard and this just wants to slide around. I'm kind of doing this, what I would say is backwards. I would like to file with my right hand and hold my left hand against it, but I'm not really in a position to hold it that way. Not even close. When I do these nut slots, I want uh, the front edge to be right where the pencil marks are. That's actually my string spacing. Uh, on the back edge, it doesn't matter near as much. So I want to point the back edge at the tuner it's coming from. That way it's a little bit easier for the string to move through. Otherwise, you're going to end up with binding problems in the nut. So your strings aren't going to move. You're going to break more strings that way. I'm just getting these started. I don't care to take them really far right off the bat. I 
probably said this before, but what I find helps me is to stick my fingernail on the uh, nut and then ride the file up against it. And that way I can kind of hold down with this hand and not allow that file to wander. So I've got these slots started. I had to stop recording because I really couldn't do it in the setup I was doing it in. Um, and I had turned around and then I wasn't on camera. So I got these started. They're not real deep. They can still be moved if I need to, I think. What I'm really noticing, and you can probably tell because this is out, there are some really deep grooves in these frets. So I am not very far off leveling these frets. What we'll do very quickly first, is check straightness. I don't think I've ever set the right side down first. We could use a hair more. It's just barely off straight there. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. I don't think that's gonna be that big of a thing. Let me get the tool to tighten this up. And then we'll do that. All right, so I got up the Allen wrench to do this. So I'm just going to give this a little snugging turn. Snugging. What a great word, snugging. It's a little stuck there, but it doesn't seem to be super, super tight. So that one little turn, and this straightened out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and put the truss rod cover back on just so I don't lose any screws. So that's looking good. I think we are actually ready to work on these frets. Uh, there are some pretty deep grooves up in here. Um, I've kind of moved up. I'll try to bring this back down where you can see. So this may take a little bit of filing to get these good. Um, I don't think it's going to be too much, but I do definitely want to work some of these grooves out to make this a little bit uh, more even. Now, on these 12 strings, you know, it's not like you're going to be bending strings on a 12 string. So you'd probably be fine actually leaving it very close to the way it is. Um, but I would like to knock them a little bit closer to level for the longevity the deeper your grooves get the more problems you can have so that's why i'm doing this here we go It's been a while since I've had to remove that much, and there's still grooves in there. Um, there are low spots I'm not hitting, although I think I'm going to stop. I think that's good enough, especially for a 12 string. You know, like I said, you're not going to be bending strings on a 12 string. Uh, the pairs don't bend together. The courses, they don't bend well. Um, so I think it's going to be good for this. Um, I'll get out the crowning file and we'll go through quickly and crown these. So we've knocked most of the grooves out of there. We now need to polish these up. Um, to do that, I'll grab some sandpaper. We'll start with that. I have some 600 here. That ought to be pretty good just to get started. So 
So that was 600. I'm going to do some 1200 as well. I'm not worried about the board at all. You can probably see it's turning gray from uh, the metal on the sandpaper. Um, I'm not worried about it. It was pretty scratched up before I got started, so I knew that I was going to clean it with a razor blade when we were done. So it speeds me up to not have to worry about it when I already know that I was going to clean it up. All right, and that's 1200. Now I'm going to start with the micro polishing pads I always use. So I think there's six of these and I just go through and do these the same as I do sandpaper. These really shine up the frets. It really does make a world of difference when you get these high sanded, high polished. Um, you can feel it underneath your fingers, underneath the strings while you're playing. Um, you know, I've said this before as well. On guitars, on guitars, you really want it to be a good polish. Uh, you'll feel it as you're playing, especially when you're bending strings. Now, on this 12 string, obviously, you're not going to be bending strings near as much. And I would probably say they probably don't need to be as high polished because of that. I have noticed on mandolins in specific, because of the courses and because you don't bend strings and you're really trying not to, you don't notice as much. Um, a lower polish is fine on a mandolin if that's okay with the person who's playing it. Uh, for me personally, I wouldn't bother to take my mandolin to a, as high of a polish because it would be a waste of my time. I can already tell that uh, the filing was a huge improvement. There's so many less flat spots and grooves and valleys in the frets. Big, big improvement. All right, that's all of those. I'll try and show this to you. It's The frets are looking really good. The fretboard itself, not so much. Um, it's time to clean that up. And very luckily, I have a nice sharp razor blade right here. And I'll basically just go through here. I'm turning this a little bit so I can get a slightly better angle on it. And scrape across the fretboard. Just like this, not got any scratches. I have to work my way across because of the radius. Um, if I sat in one spot, I would scrape the radius out of the board and we don't want to do that. I can go right over top the inlays, no problem. This is working really well, actually. There were quite a few uh, scratches in this direction, like across the grain, and just this light scraping, and I'm not taking off much, but it really is taking all those scratches out. All right, that's looking really good. Usually I'd use uh, Be Good oil on the fretboards, and I would, except for it's not sitting on my desk. The boiled linseed oil is sitting on my desk, so I'm going to use it. I've just got a little bit on this cloth. You can see this is boiled linseed oil. I don't use this very often. Um, it was on my desk for something else, and because it's here, I'm gonna use it. I'm just gonna use this to rub some of this in here. Doesn't take a whole lot. That's what I'm gonna oil the fretboard with. Make sure that I don't have any excess on there. 
that's looking pretty good. I believe the last thing we need to do is make a saddle for this. It's getting a little late tonight, so I don't want to be making too much noise at this point. So I'll put that off till tomorrow. First thing, we get a new saddle for this, and this thing should be just about ready to go. Um, between this clip and the next clip, I'm gonna go see if I can find some bridge pins for this thing. Hopefully I've got some of those ready. And then uh, once this is done, we should be ready to go. So I was having trouble sleeping last night, so I ended up working on this a whole bunch more um, real, real late last night. I got the saddle fitting in the slot. It's still way too tall. Um, I've got kind of a radius drawn out on it. I didn't take that off of it yet. I went and I found some pins that fit in the hole and they're all black and I had to re-drill out those holes because of the glue and then ream them out to fit the uh, pins. So that's all done. Um, we're just about ready to put a radius on this saddle and then start talking about strings so we can figure out how high it is. So I'm gonna go do that real quick, put the radius on this saddle. Um, I'm gonna put you know, the radius this way and then I'm also going to put some brake angle on it so that uh, the strings don't come straight across it, they come at an angle. So I'll do that all in one go. It'll be somewhere between 12 and 15 degrees. My disc sander doesn't have the most accurate uh, dial for that, but somewhere in that range is good enough. So I'll go take care of that and we'll come back here and put this back in here. And then we can probably start thinking about strings for this thing. All right, so I got a uh, radius on there and I have some brake angle on there. I also threw some real quick uh, compensation for the B strings on there. Um, that's gonna be too tall, I can already tell. Um, it's probably not gonna be crazy too tall, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and start stringing it up so I get an idea of where it needs to come down. <clears throat> I'm going to be using um, these. These are Earthwound. They're the Ernie Ball 12 string strings. They're the lights. I definitely recommend if you're going to string up a 12 string, don't really use anything but lights uh, at standard pitch. I had never heard of anybody tuning a 12 string to anything other than maybe a half step down. But uh, until not that long ago when I heard somebody really, really drop tuning a 12 string and of course if you were doing that then I guess you could use heavier strings because they wouldn't have as much tension. But that's a little foreign to me so we're going to go ahead and string this thing up nice and regular. I'll go ahead and get this thing started stringing it up. Um, it's not real interesting to watch me string this thing. Uh, while I'm doing this, I just wanted to point out all of these pins are leftover pins that I had. They're not uh, <laughs> really going to anything, so it's, it was really nice that I had just some leftover pins hanging around to fit in here because when I got this, it didn't have any with it. So I'll go ahead and get this thing strung up and uh, I'll bring you back once I'm ready to go make some real progress. So I've got this tuned up to a half step down. I am kind of contemplating leaving it here. Um, you know, because this ripped the bridge off the top, I'm a little worried about it. Now, I think that it's better than it was, obviously, but I these 12 strings can be very temperamental. Um, I also wanted to say, I really don't like tuning 12 strings. Um, I've said this before, and I, every time I get another one to tune, I just think, it's um, very tense. The G string, the high G string, is the same thickness as the E string, but instead of going to an E, you're going up to a G. It's a little nerve wracking. Some people don't like tuning their E strings because it gets real tight and you're worried you're gonna break it. Well, it's that, but worse. So anyways, I'm going back and forth about leaving this a half step down um, just to be 
gentle on the guitar. Um, I'm not quite sure yet, but what I do know is it's crazy high. I'm going to have to take the saddle out and go knock a whole bunch off. Um, the nut doesn't look terrible, but it, it's going to need some work. And the funny thing is, like, so it's crazy high, and the nut is not great, but I can almost guarantee you that this is already set up better than some you'd find in a store. <laughs> it's kind of sad, but we'll go ahead and take care of this now. Um, it's actually, like, too high to get a good measurement on it. Um, so I guess I'll just take it, take the saddle out and knock. Uh, my measuring stick stops at 150 thousandths and it's higher than that so if i want to lower it by at least 50 thousandths to get it onto the uh onto the gauge then i gotta take 100 thou off at the saddle so i'll do roughly that and then i can measure it nice and accurately uh, i think i'll go ahead and do that first and then once that's done we'll come back and we'll look at doing uh the nut height real quick i'm not sure that's going to be the too too big of a deal so, uh, hopefully we can get this done in a timely manner. I'll go ahead and take this all back apart now so I can take the saddle out, knock some height off of it, get it in a reasonable range, and then we can go from there. So, we're back and tuned up to actual standard pitch now. Um, I'm going to do a quick measurement at the 12th fret. We're still pretty high. Still pretty crazy high. That's not great. In the 130, 140 thousandths range. Not great. Um, what I think I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to work on the nut first. So to do the nut without thinking about the saddle, I'm going to put a capo on the third fret, which is actually going to set the strings on the second fret from where we're working. I've then got a pick that I've made that's the right height off of the first fret, so I can slide it through here and see doesn't get stuck anywhere. This is about 10 thousandths of an inch, this uh, pick. It's really thin. I had to thin it down really, really thin. You can see it just slides in there. And this way I can do the nut without thinking about the saddle at all. Um, so what I'll do is I'll tune one string down, I'll take it out, I'll file a little out, put it back in, tune it back up, and then we'll do this, continue to do this for all 12 of them. This is a really slow process. And I have to remember what uh, gauge all the strings are. I can do it when it's six really easily, but I can't do the 12s that easily. I have to look. So we'll start with that, uh, the high E string on the, for the bass string. The octave string on the bass course, I guess. So it uh, fits that string through there just, or it fits that pick through there just fine. So what I'll do is I'll lower it enough to get it out of the slot. I'll take the right sized file, take it down a little bit. Put it back in. Get the tuner out. We'll tune it up. Put the capo back on. Slide that pick back in there. And now it's got friction. It's uh, kind of hard to show, but that will hold that right in there now. So that's perfect. Um, it's not sitting on that fret, which I don't want. You don't want it too low, but it's just, it's grabbing that. You can see there, it's not gonna fall out. That string is holding that pick. So that's that's perfect. Um, that's cool. That's not gonna take a whole lot of filing on any one of these strings. Um, that's part of making that nut lower to start off with. So we'll do the, uh, the bass. E string now. Yep. 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 
Yeah, I can see it moves the string. So we're sitting real well. Uh, on that one, I actually tried to move that E string uh, out a little bit so it uh, paired up with its pair, its course a little better. Um, it was just a little bit off and I think it's been improved now. So it's looking really good. Um, I'm probably not gonna film a whole lot more of this. This is a really slow process, but you've seen exactly how I do all of it. Now I'm just going to go ahead and finish it up. So that first fret uh, nut height is really good. Um, I think we're looking fine there. What I need to worry about now is the actual uh, string height off the 12, which will be the saddle height. Um, I'm gonna do a quick recheck. It's come down a little bit maybe because of the uh, nut adjustments. But we're still sitting at 135 thousandths. So I want that to be at least in the 90 thousandths area. Um, so that's like um, almost 100 thou off of the saddle. A little less than that. Um, you take what you want to drop it by here and double it for what you need off the saddle. So yeah, I'm going to take about a hundred thou off the saddle, probably 95 ish. Um, that's just going to be how it's going to be. That's going to make our saddle really low, unfortunately, but I suspect part of that is some belly bulge. Uh, some, you know, this is an older guitar that's had quite a bit of havoc done to it. I suspect it's got some pull in that area and I also suspect it's probably not a great neck angle. A uh, combination of factors make it just not great. Um, but I'll get it playing and it'll be playing fine. I wish that the saddle were a little taller but on a guitar like this it's not worth pulling the neck out and fixing the angle at this point. Um, I don't think there's any broken braces on the inside. I don't uh, the bridge plate might be a little torn up, so it could probably do for a replacement, but it's not worth me doing it now. I've already 100% for sure put in more money in this than this is worth. So I'm going to fix it the easy way and then somewhere down the line if I decide to come back at it, I can always fix it the better way. I say better as in the more permanent fix, um, you know, because obviously without reinforcing the inside, this could get worse. Without changing the neck angle again, it could possibly get worse. But for me right now, because this is my call on a guitar that's mine, I'm, this is what I'm choosing to do. So that's what I'll do. Um, I'll loosen all the strings again. Oh boy, my favorite thing. And then lower that saddle about a hundred thou and then we should be just about done so we're tuned back up i'm going back to a half step down i just think that's um mm, yeah a little more gentle on this guitar so that's what i'm going to decide to leave it at um action wise about ninety thousandths on the bass string About 90 thousandths on the treble string. Um, that's good enough for this guitar, uh, for this 12 string. Uh, that saddle is pretty low, and you know I would have liked to have left it a little higher. Um, the other thing I did a quick check on was intonation, and it's looking pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with where it's at. I'm not going to bother going any further with that. Um, that was the one string. I did go through all of them, but I'm not going to bother uh, going any further. I think we're ready to play this thing and uh, be done with it. <laughs> uh, I've been kind of rushing around to get this thing done. So hopefully we can play this thing now. I'll go get mic'd up and set up and we'll play it and uh, finish this thing off. I think this thing turned out really good actually for uh, all that was wrong with it. You know, some bridges come off of guitars. This one was ripped off. It was... Uh, not good the way that this bridge came off of this guitar. It took as much as it could with it and left as much as it could behind. <laughs> it was not a great uh, bridge removal. 
I think it went back on probably as good as you could get one um, for as quickly as it was done. And not to say that it was rushed or anything, but it was a reasonable amount of time and it's a very nice job for as torn up as it was. I'm pretty happy with it. It's looking like a beat up old guitar and that's all it's really going to be. I mean, you're not going to fix uh, the looks when you have a torn bridge like that. Anyways, it's back to playing and the action's fairly low and tuned a half step down. It makes it maybe a little easier to play. Um, so here we go. I think it sounds fine. I'm, um, you know, I'm pleased with it. I think a lot of 12 strings in this price range sound very similar. Uh, not that one, this one included. I've played quite a few 12 strings, even in very different body sizes. And in this particular price range, I find they all sound very similar. But I hope you enjoyed this little bit of work on this Yamaha. Um, what is it? It's an APX 512A. I assume A is for the finish, probably amber. Um, you know, it's a pretty good player at this point. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. Um, I didn't mention this before, I don't think, but this was actually given to me by my old scoutmaster, Mr. Cronky. So we get a big thank you to Mr. Cronky for sending this my way for me to work on. Um, it's back in playing order. That's pretty cool. Um, so I think we're about done with this thing. I can set it aside and get started on something else. So thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Hey everybody, we're coming up to the end of the year here and uh, that'll mean my first full year out on my own. <laughs> uh, we're also creeping up on 5,000 subscribers and that's a kind of a big milestone and I kind of want to do something since these two things are pretty close, but I'm not real sure what I want to do. So I'm looking for some input from the viewers. Uh, I think I've set up we could do maybe like a live show or something along those lines. I'm really not sure, but I'd like some like some input. If you have an idea for something you'd like to see or something we could do, um, that'd be great. I would really appreciate it. So you could leave that in the comments or you could send me an email. So uh, hopefully we can do something cool. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.